I think the heater came on. Which, what? Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian. Today, as promised, we're gonna be doing a Q&A and I have quite a few questions, so let's jump right in. One of the questions I got the most was, what do you do for a living or what is your day job? Things like that. And I did address this a little bit in my last video, um, but I do work part-time in production at a local branded clothing apparel kind of company here, a small business near where I live. Um, and I do that part-time. Um, and then I do work on my creative endeavors and writing and YouTube, blogging, uh, sewing, all these other things in the rest of my time. And those are the things obviously that I'm most passionate about. Um, that's why I'm working part-time right now instead of full-time. I have had full-time jobs since college, but I just um, am lucky enough that my parents are super, super supportive and they want to see me succeed in the things that I want to do um, in my creative projects. So they are willing to let me continue to live with them while I work part-time to pay those student loan bills and then also work on my side hustles on the side, just trying to get either any, something off the ground on my own. Um, mostly I'm working on my fiction, my writing right now. So that is what I do for a living. What do I do that makes me feel most alive? I write, I'm writing fiction. That's what makes me feel like I'm really living, but I don't make a living doing that yet. So I work part-time and I live at home. That's the, that's the answer there, kids. I'm super, super, super lucky. Um, and I know that, don't worry. And Eileen the Queen asks, what are the pros and cons of my day job? And I would say the pros are that it's quite flexible. My boss is really nice and super supportive of me as well, which is nice. But then also the cons are having to wake up early, which just, you know, are, is a con of almost every job that there is. And, uh, but I just, it's a con of adulthood really, is having to wake up early. Actually not even adulthood, you have to wake up early for school too. My con for life is having to wake up early. I'm a night owl, I don't wanna, I hate that. Another common question I got was about the photos on my blog or who takes my pictures for me and like things like that. Like how do I, how do I do my photography for my blog? And the answer is that um, while some bloggers have a blogger boyfriend that follows them around to take pictures, I have a blogger mom that I take around with me to take pictures for me. And it's kind of a really nice thing to be able to do with her and have that kind of set aside time every week to go and do some photos and chat a little bit. Um, of course I do live with my parents, so I see them. I see her all the time, but it's nice to have that little us time as well. And we go and get pictures, mostly at like local parks, I would say is the best recommendation. Like as far as backgrounds, someone asked me like about the backgrounds for my photos. And it's mostly just like local parks or open spaces between housing tracks. I do live in suburbia. So it's a lot of like local tiny parks and things like that. If I can get down to like a botanic garden, obviously I will have a more epic background that way, or if I get into the city. Um, but most of the time it's just local gardens or, you know, things like that. And the key really is, I think, for outfit photos, at least if you're anything like me, is to take 250 to 350 photos and then should be able to get about 10 out of that that you like. Um, at least that's how it works for me. So that's my biggest tip is just take a bunch um, and try different lighting and move around and see what works best in the end. I mean, sometimes I'll take 300 and I will only like three of them and then I have to get really juicy. I do wanna to switch to shooting on a 35 millimeter prime lens soon. We do have one, I just have never tried it for outfits and it's something I want to try out. So that's a little bit about my photography process for the blog. My Lisa or my Lisa 702 asks if I could um, tell you guys a little bit about the book that I am writing. Um, and I just really, I don't know if I can. That's that's why I haven't been. Um, I, I don't mind talking about writing or about writing process or like things like that surrounding that, but right, talking about the book and the story itself, I'm not sure how much you are supposed to kind of share about your manuscripts like that when you're about to start like querying to agents and trying to get published, like when you're at the very beginning of like trying to get into that professional publishing arena. Uh, I'm a total newbie to publishing, so I just don't know how much you're allowed to talk about. Obviously, my beta readers have read the whole book and I've talked to them about the book. So there are people who out there who know all about it, but I just am not sure how much you're allowed to share. So I just haven't been uh, really sharing much about the plot or the characters or anything really. But I guess in general, if I'm going to be vague about it, it's about two girls who both end up in this sort of rougher city in the near future and they're both kind of trying to make it and they become friends and it's just about kind of their journey over the next couple of months and things that happen to them that change them and change how they see each other and eh, it's kind of about like morality and crime it has nothing to do with vintage at all uh it's a little tiny bit sci-fi i'm calling it speculative fiction that's what i think fits best and yeah so that's a little bit about it but i really am not sure how much i'm allowed to say about it trust me when and if I can get this thing going, I will never shut up about this book and I'll be talking about it all the time. So you just would be happy now that I can't actually 
go into it because I will never shut up. Kate M. Vintage asks, who are your favorite authors and what should I read by them? Um, I would say when pressed that my favorite authors are JK Rowling and probably Ag Agatha Christie, but I really don't have a favorite author right now. I have um, been faced with the problem over the past few years of I either have time to write or time to read and I have chosen to use that time to write, um, which is good in some ways because I have some a half finished manuscript and a additionally a finished manuscript now, but I just haven't gotten as much reading done as I would like. Uh, it's just majorly, ma mainly a time factor thing. If I could just sit and read and write, and those were my only responsibilities during a day, I would be the happiest camper in the world. But I don't really have a favorite author right now. You guys put your favorite authors in the description and then I will know what to put on my to be read list for coming up here. Cause I just need to like take a month where I just like read all the things. So leave me recommendations in the, the comments below. Nana Zarb asks, what are your favorite vintage films? Um, and I'm not a big, huge old Hollywood buff. I really do like vintage films and I want to watch a lot more of them, but I just haven't seen a lot of them. I'm trying to work my way through the classics, but um, obviously Casablanca, super great film, very amazing in many, many ways, and also good fashion. Um, and then also The Women, which is a film from 1939, which is an all-female cast, which is awesome and amazing, amazing fashion in that film, even if they are they're, they are talking and being catty about men the, most of the film, but the fashion is just divine and there are no boys on screen, so it has some things going for it. And then um, His Girl Friday with Rosalind Russell. I love that film. I've seen that a couple of times. I just think it's very witty and fast and the dialogue is super sharp. A lot of old 40s films have that really sharp, like cutting dialogue. And I really enjoy watching films like that. Um, as far as vintage films from not the old Hollywood era, but probably like, you know, the Spielberg kind of era. I love the original Star Wars trilogy. I love the first and the third Indiana Jones movie. This second one, not so much. Um, and then also Blade Runner um, from 1982, the original Blade Runner film. Uh, problematic things going on there as well, but stylistically, I mean, whew, so good. I just love that noir infused cyberpunk situation. So as far as vintage films go, I would say my favorite vintage film, if we're talking about like vintage being 25 years or older, it's probably Blade Runner really. Um, but you know, yeah, th those, are, those are some films I like, I guess. Library of Pretty asks, who is your vintage style icon or favorite old time movie star? And I really, I don't really have a favorite, I have to say. Again, I would like to watch more films. I think I feel undereducated to make this uh, claim. I have to have an opinion on this, actually. I mean, I like Audrey Hepburn, but like everyone likes Audrey Hepburn and Katherine Hepburn as well. Um, but I just feel like I don't have a very informed uh, way. I don't, I'm not informed enough to make this decision. So there's that. And Misadventure XX asked if you could have any three vintage movie stars to dinner, who would you have and why? And again, I just feel like I am not informed enough to know who I'd want to come to dinner. From listening to the You Must Remember This podcast, which is where I'm trying to learn more about old Hollywood, it seems like everyone was a bit of a drunk. And uh, so I'm not sure if I would really want to hang out with, with anybody um, in this crowd, to be honest. Uh, maybe at the beginning of the night, but not, not by the end of it. Nikki Velasquez Fine Art asks, do you have any recommendations on queer media, especially ones that don't end tragically? Which yes, I know that's a problem. Um, I just watched the San Junipero episode of Black Mirror. I actually have not watched the rest of Black Mirror yet because again, I don't have enough time in my life um, to do anything that I want to do apparently. But uh, I knew I had to make an exception for San Junipero and I am very glad that I did. So if you haven't watched that episode, it is on Netflix. Go check it out. A couple of my favorite actresses are in that as well. So that made it even better. And it's got like a 1980s aesthetic going on, which is fun. So go watch San Junipero if you haven't already. Um, but other than that, I really don't know of any that are, especially ones that don't end tragically. Um, I liked the film The Handmaiden, although I have heard some people say that that's like a very man's view on that story, but like I, I really enjoyed it and I thought it was super stylish. Um, so maybe check out The Handmaiden, it's a Korean film as well. Um, but also just watch um, Drunk Lesbians Watch on Girlship TV because I don't really want to watch the like quote unquote bad movies that they have are sitting through, but I like watching them react to them. So just go watch that YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the description. You might discover a few titles you haven't heard of that you want to watch, or it's just kind of fun to watch them watch things. But if you guys have recommendations for um, queer media that doesn't end tragically, do put them in the comments below again. I'm always looking for recommendations in this category. The Emma Mars asks, if I could live in a movie universe, which one would I pick? And wow, um, I would probably say if I can be a witch and it's after like the Wizarding War is over in Harry Potter, then I would live in the Harry Potter universe uh, because that would be awesome. Um, or uh, on the other hand, if I could live in a galaxy far, far away in the correct timeline and be force sensitive, that would also be pretty awesome. So either being a witch or a Jedi, clearly I just want to have magic powers 
Um, no surprise there, really. Caroline C asks, what are your favorite TV shows or movies? And do you think watching a TV show or movie can influence your style sometimes, which I definitely think it can. Um, I've definitely come out of films before and thought, I need to wear something secret agent or tomorrow or need to wear something really 50s now or like after watching Brooklyn I was like do I need a beaded sweater yes so I definitely think watching things um, can influence your style for sure as for my favorite films I love Marie Antoinette from Sofia Coppola Blade Runner both the 82 and the one that just came out last year um, just aesthetics wise not necessarily <laughs> themes wise always or the way that these films treat women I guess I should say um, so the original Star Wars trilogy House Moving Castle and really all the Ghibli films and then when it go comes to like TV uh, it's even nerdier because I discovered anime sort of recently. It's not something I ever thought I would be interested in, but now that I've discovered a few that I like, uh, it's it's hard for me to find ones that I like, but when I do, I really like them. Um, so my favorite TV shows ever really are going to be Cowboy Bebop, Samurai Champloo, House of Five Leaves, Mushishi is one I just watched this year that I really enjoyed, and then Rurouni Kenshin. Uh, that would be the anime that kind of got me back into anime watching Rurouni Kenshin again. My brother asked if I wanted to go see the live action films that came out a couple years ago. And I agreed kind of vaguely remembering that I had watched the series on like Toonami a long, long time ago as a kid. And then I sort of fell into this like black hole of discovering anime after that because I rewatched Rurouni Kenshin and it just sent me down down a weeaboo spiral as it were. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that I don't like, but those are my like top, some of the best media I've ever seen now is anime. Um, also the Ghost in the Shell movie, uh, the Akira film, and the Rurouni Kenshin Trust and Betrayal OVA. Um, I think it's a four-part um, OVA. That's that's my shit. I love, love Trust and Betrayal. I just love the Kenshin backstory. So, you know, I'm a total nerd uh, for that kind of stuff. So, but as far as like live action TV goes, not really, not really into much. I really enjoyed Westworld and I liked Downton Abbey sometimes. Sometimes it was just frustrating, uh, but the fashion was always good. And I do like The Crown on Netflix as well. So I need to get, there's a lot of live action TV I just haven't seen and I know is good, but again, don't have enough time to watch all the things and read all the things and do all the things that I want to do. So moving on now to some more vintage themed questions. Aria asks, do I have any tips for getting a vintage style haircut? And actually my haircut is a very basic haircut. It's just a blunt bob haircut right now. So that's just something that works for my hair type. You kind of have to figure out what works for you. Layered styles um, or haircuts like the midi haircut, which I'll put a diagram here of the midi. Um, I have had a midi before as well, but I found it just too layered for me around the ears, I don't know, I just didn't really like the shape as much as I do with just regular bob. You kind of have to feel like feel out what works for your hair type. A very common vintage style haircut is just the horseshoe cut, which is where the back of your hair is just cut rounded um, so that the sides are a little bit shorter in the center back. Uh, finding a hairstylist who is willing to cut you a midi can be kind of hard sometimes. I think um, one of the tips I've heard is trying to go to a salon where a lot of older ladies go because uh, our great grandmas and our grandmas liked having their hair cut the same way they did when they were young. So usually stylists who are used to working with seniors are used to doing older styles of cuts because that's what older people still like. So that could be a good tip. Seek out maybe stylists who know how to do older style haircuts um, because of their clientele and therefore can give you a vintage haircut even now. Mariella Just Us Books asks, what products do you use for your hair? Um, and I don't really use very many products on my hair. I do still use Trust My Hairspray just because I haven't picked up a can of something cruelty free yet, which is terrible, terrible. I'm trying to switch everything in my routine to cruelty free as much as possible. So that's something I still need to switch. Um, but I just have basic like Tresemme hold hairspray and then I use Carol's Daughters shampoo conditioner leave-in conditioner spray and pomade when needed but I don't use a ton of product on my hair I'm just lucky that I live in a really dry state there's not very much humidity here um so my frizziness is kept at bay from that like I don't know if I went to Florida if I would have a completely different situation going on but luckily for me we'd have very low humidity so frizz isn't something I'm I have to worry about too, too much. Chainburger asks, do I have any tips for packing an international trip so that wrinkles don't ruin your vintage glam vibes? And I would say, get thee a travel steamer. Uh, I need a new one myself actually, because the old one I have is kind of sad now, but a travel steamer is a good option. Um, it is something else to pack, but eh. And then your hotel might have a, or Airbnb might have a steamer or a iron as well. And I'm, this is a boring answer, but I will just get up a little bit earlier and iron my dress. Uh, I know it's not very, uh, it's not a very secret tip there or life hack, but I just, I just make time to iron in the morning and I do travel when I, I do, when I do travel, I do travel with vintage style clothes. So it is something, it is a concern of mine wrinkles, but I just, I make the time to iron them in the morning, which is boring. I'm sorry. I don't have very good tips for you. Stingy uni girl asks any bucket list items you think vintage fashion lovers should know about, or just bucket list in general, I guess like my bucket list in general. Um, and I would say that most 40s lovers want to have a Lillianne suit that's usually 
on a lot of people's unicorn like wish list of things they would love to find or have someday in their collection. And I actually already have a Lillianne suit, but I would like one in black. Mine is navy, but I've been I was super lucky to pick up one for a, a total steal for they usually go for like six hundred dollars plus. Um, and I actually got mine for two hundred fifty dollars, I think it was. But I saw it and I saw my measurements and saw the price, and I was like, well, that's never gonna happen again. So I just snapped it up. So I actually do already have a Lillianne suit, but uh, yeah, I don't really have any vintage super dream items on my list anymore because I've just been collecting for a while and I've been able to find a lot of things that I wanted. So uh, I guess that makes me in the minority. But um, as far as bucket list in general, I would say seeing my book like on a shelf in a bookstore, like seeing my work at like an end cap at Barnes and Noble. That's Pretty top bucket list item there. And then also traveling Japan and just traveling more um, in Europe as well in general are also bucket list items for me.